Well, this video is going to be an answer to something that has been put out by a pastor named Billy Crone. And let me just explain the situation before I get into answering this thing here. Uh, back on May 31st, a very dear sister in Christ, uh, Helga, her name is, her YouTube name is Rain Hato Canto 4, I guess. And uh, she had gotten some copies of my latest video, uh, the, the Real Bible Version issue, Exposed. And she wanted to go to this Billy Crone's church and put them on the cars of the people that were there. She put out 52 uh, tracks and whatever else. And so I guess some of his people came and said, what's the deal on the Bible Version issue? So this is Billy Crone's answer to the controversy between the King James Version and the perverted NIV and whatever else. And of course the NIV is Billy Crone's uh, preferred version. Um, so I want to be able to answer this because after all, you know, he's attacking the King James Version and that's my subject. I like to refute these people. And uh, so I just want to say this, if you are from Billy Crone's church, I want you to watch this video before passing judgment. Bible says Proverbs 18, 13, he that answereth the matter before he hear, heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Okay? And of course, just plain logic would say that if you answer something before you hear the whole argument, then you're the one who's a fool. Okay? So please watch the whole thing before you decide one way or the other. And consider what's being said. Now you can go to uh, Sister Helga's uh, blog there, her website, and you can read all the details here. I'm not going to go over everything in great detail as far as what she's written. I'm just going to talk about what this Billy Crone uh, guy has written. Okay, so let's start out. He says here, using the same logic the KJV only group uses against other translations, there seems to be a few problems. Number one, the problem of the King James Version language. Some of the language used in KJV appears to be a stumbling block in understanding a passage. Now let me just say right off the bat, okay, uh, number one, I have somewhat of a sarcastic sense of humor. If you've watched my other videos, you've probably picked up on that. And of course, the modern thin-skinned Christian, uh, they confuse that for attitude or, or that I'm hateful or something. I'm not at all hateful, okay? Uh, if I hated people, I wouldn't be sitting here making these videos warning you about the errors in the new versions, about the fact that the new versions are Roman Catholic. Um, so during this study, you're probably going to hear me say some things that you're going to be shocked about, you know, and I'm going to uh, rebuke this Billy Crone because I do believe he's a false prophet. After reading this stuff, he makes some very serious, just out and out lies. I mean, it is incredible. I've had and heard a lot of attacks on the King James Version, and some of the stuff in here is just ridiculous. There's no nice way to put it. Um, but let's get into, but, you know, before I continue, I just want to say, to call the King James Version a stumbling block, um, that's very serious. The King James Version is God's perfect word for the English-speaking people. Almost 400 years old. Next year it'll be 400 years old. And to say it's a stumbling block when more people have been saved from the preaching and teaching of the King James Version than any Bible in history, including the original autographs. And it's a stumbling block. Very, very serious. Okay. Um, and let me just say this. He says that the King James Version is archaic. It's, it's hard to understand and everything. Uh, well, I know of kids that have Down syndrome. And the, the term there, and I'm not trying to be mean, is they're retarded. And these little retarded children can memorize the King James Version scriptures, they can quote it, and they can tell you what the verses mean. I personally know of a situation where there was a little girl that had Down syndrome, and she, could, she couldn't load a dishwasher, she couldn't add or subtract, or just basic things that little kids should know how to do. But that little girl could quote the King James Version and you'd say, well, now, what does it mean? And she would explain it. So what's the problem there, Billy Crone? Why can't you understand it? Something's wrong there. 
Um, actually, one of the reasons people can't understand the King James Version is because it's, you come to it with a spiritual understanding. The natural man does not understand the things of the Lord. Okay, Again, don't want to get into that. And one more point before I go on here. I know I'm kind of hanging on this point here, but uh, the King James Version is a fifth grade reading level. So it's not a stumbling block. Okay, that's lie number one. It's not a stumbling block. Then he goes on to say, there are several types of archaic language in the King James Version. Use of thee and thou, pronouns and ye, thine, etc. Use of est and eth ending on verbs. Use of archaic words that have lost their meaning. Use of archaic words that have changed their meaning. Use of archaic idioms and phrases. That's probably the number one attack on the King James Version. And you actually study it and you see that it's very easy to, to disprove. Okay, first of all, thee, thou, thine, thy, those are all references to singular, to, you know, one person. Whereas ye and you can be one person or multiple people. Okay, there are videos on YouTube to explain this. All right, it's, you know, I know it, it takes a little bit more intelligence to, you know, understand the King James Bible. You know, you, you know it's, it's not so much for stupid people, you know, but it's just ridiculous. And, and, okay, the other words you say are archaic and everything, look them up in a dictionary. If you don't know what they mean, look them up in a dictionary. I mean, come on. And it's interesting because you don't hear very many attacks against Shakespeare or other classic works of literature. Only the King James Version. Oh, we can't understand it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then he goes on to uh, quote Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. You can see it here. And he says about Sakur, what does, who today knows what Sakur is? And then he uses the NIV there. It means help. Well, if you look up Webster's 1828 dictionary, I have one right here. Uh, it says, uh, let's see, where is it? Aid, help, assistance, particularly assistance that relieves and delivers from difficulty, want, or distress. So, it's a different w way of saying help, okay? And the King James Version has both help and succor in it. Oh, you mean two words to have in our English language to, that both basically mean the same thing? Yeah, uh-huh. You know, there have been scientific studies that say that if you have an expanded, the more you expand your vocabulary, the more your IQ goes up. Think about that one. Why would somebody want you to have a lower IQ? Well, because people with lower IQs are easier to control. And they're easier to fool and deceive as well, by the way. People with high IQs don't make good slaves. Think about that one. And con artists can't con people with high IQs nearly as easily. You better think about that when you have this, we need to dumb down the Bible thing. Absolutely not. Okay, then he goes into uh, the thing about the King James Version mentions unicorns, okay? And he says here, you can see it says, which are a fictitious animal. It gives a bunch of references and he says then that they are a fictitious animal. Uh, where's your proof? Where's your proof that the unicorn is a fictitious animal? And see, he's using the modern day what people today think of as a unicorn. What was it back then? What was it back in the Bible times? What was a unicorn? He doesn't discuss that. He doesn't cover that. It's kind of interesting, too, because this is one of the attacks that an atheist will use against the Word of God. Kind of weird how these modern version people will side with the atheists a lot of time. They'll use the same arguments that the atheists are using to try and get rid of the Bible. I find that very interesting. Don't tell me that the Holy Spirit is behind this new version stuff. He's not. Okay? But let's continue here. And and just want to say one more thing on the subject of the unicorn. Okay, let's go with the modern thought of what a unicorn is. A horse with a with a single horn coming out of its head, out of its forehead. Uh, can you prove to me that they never existed? No. You can't prove that they never existed. You'd have a hard time proving that. Okay? So again. It's a ridiculous argument to use against the King James Version. 